Hey everybody, Satorius here. Welcome back to my channel. This episode is going to be kind of random. I'm going to show you different ways that you can manage tension in a system, whether it be for hauling, or in this case, I'm uh, strength testing something that I handmade. And you know, the, the, the system or this type of um, setup that I'm going to show you, or these types of setups rather, uh, can be used in a huge range of different applications. Any, you know, it's especially if you're doing hauling or rescue, A, you always want to back up. You want some other way other than just, you know, a prusik on your pulley system doing progress capture that might bind on you. Um, you also, if you're doing something like what I'm doing where you're not hauling something but you're actually increasing the amount of you know, um, tensile strain, you know, the amount of stress in the system as you pull, um, and if you're using progress capture, it's going to get really, really tight. And if you don't have a way other than this Prusik, which will bind, to let the system relieve all that energy, then it's going to stay stuck. You'll have to cut it, and that would be a disaster. So. Um, let's take a tour of what I have set up and go from there. Okay, so we begin with the anchor and here I'm using, um, let me get to the other side because of the shadow. Here I'm using a friction saver, an adjustable friction saver and I'm just connecting to the soft connections. And then I have my sample that I'm testing right here. I've got a, you know, something that I know is going to meet at least 50% of its minimum breaking strength for this Teufelberger Epicord um, hitch cord. And then I have my sample that I'm testing, which is something that I hand sewed. And I've already done one pull test on this, but I had an issue with my system and it wasn't pulling properly, so I'm doing it again. As you can see, it's already relatively tight. And then from there, it goes to my pull rope. And then I have here this entire system is a compound pulley system. It has a double sheave pulley on this end, and then here's the progress capture. And so then on the other end is another double sheave pulley. So that is a five to one, and then Attached to that five to one, I have this Prusik here pulling on the pull strand or the load strand, not the load strand, excuse me, the, um, yeah, the pull strand of the double sheave five to one system, which goes to a change of direction pulley and then goes back down to this pulley here. Um, this now creates a three to one, which is, so this three to one is connected to the five to one, which makes it a compound 15 to one pulley system. So what does that mean? Well, that means any, well, theoretically, it means that if I, put in 100 pounds of force onto the pull strand, which is there where I pull, um, then the output, uh, wait, what did I say, 100 pounds? Yeah, the output would be theoretically 1,500 pounds of force. 
But, of course, there are other forces involved, like friction, and some of these pulleys are not, you know, ultra, um, what do they call them? Well, they're not, you know, top-notch, perfect pulleys with the best bearings. So, you know, you gotta incorporate, usually, um, with any pulley system, there is 10% loss at every pulley. So, that's pretty substantial, but, you know, you're still gonna get mechanical advantage. Um, anyway, so, going from the pull strand, uh, that is just a hand ascender, I might have already said that, but the hand ascender is just so I can get a firm grip on the, you know, the pull strand. And then, here I have a rigging plate, and I've used two carabiners to ensure that this doesn't move. And then I've used the pull strand of the pulley system to create an inline figure of eight as an anchor. And then <clears throat> from that inline figure of eight, it goes to a anchor here where it makes a slight bend and there is a munter hitch. Why do I have a munter hitch here? Um, well, the reason is so that when I apply force into the system, this pulley system, this will prevent some of that strain from going into this, which is the final anchor point. It is what I'm using to ensure that if I you know, use that pulley system to pull all the stretch out of the rope and then beyond get all the stretch out of the, the sample and then start basically getting it extremely tight. Um, then what happens, like I said, is this progress capture project here will usually, almost always, because of the amount of forces, it's not like I'm hauling um, where it's just the force of a person or two people, you know, a victim and a rescuer, it's a lot more. So this binds, but I need it because I want to, you know, gradually, uh, like, pulse load the sample. And so what happens is it gets impossible. If I didn't have this and I just had this tied here, um, I'd have to cut it to get it down. Um, but since this is here, um, I have this rope wrench, is what it's called, and it puts a bend here, which takes out um, about 50% of the force getting pulled into this Valdetain truss, which is probably the best choice for this operation because they are, are pretty good at breaking under load. Um, and so that's really all there is to it. And because of this munter, there's even less forces into this. And so this is just one option for how you can have a, either, you can use it as either a lowering backup, which is not shown here. That'd be a different system. Um, or just a backup system to relieve tension. Um, you know, there's a number of applications I probably haven't thought of at the moment, but, you know, I'm sure someone's going to watch this, or at least I hope, and be like, aha, that's how I can do it. So, let me show you some of the other options that you can use in lieu of a rope wrench. Okay, so another way that you can lock in the, the system in a way that is lowerable is by using a, either a figure eight or a rescue eight, which is just this piece of hardware here. 
and there's just a big piece of aluminum magnalium or steel and as you can see you basically lock everything in by wrapping it around um, for this particular application I think the rescue weight is more ideal because it has the ears here which allow you to you know go around and lock it off easily uh, don't mind this rope wrench swinging here um, I just didn't want to take it off because I'm too lazy to put it back on again because I'm going to use it again in a minute um, or when I'm done with this video so all you have to do when you want to you know release the tension in the system is undo this and carefully then you have it like that and just let it go like that and you're good as you can see it just dropped everything very simple very primitive um, good inexpensive choice if you want to make this a little better I have a similar system that I'm going to show you next okay so here's that improvement on the previous version that I was just talking about all you do you know you still same connection a carabiner and the only difference is now you've extended the system using a well 60 centimeter uh, loop runner um, sling that's the word I was looking for so you got this 60 centimeter sling and then you add just the basic Prusik loop and make a Prusik right here. And the reason this works is just like the rope wrench, which has that little triangular part at the front where it bends the rope and absorbs much of the force, making the Prusik able to break, you know, or be able to be depressed, um, allowing the rope to run through is exactly what's going on here. Um, just like that, the rope is going through this figure eight device and that's taking up anywhere from 60 or 70%, don't quote me on that, but it's probably accurate, of the load, making it very easy to um, just depress this Prusik and down all the rope will go and it'll all get released same deal um, whether you're hauling or doing what I'm doing and creating a lot of tension so that's another option you could even um, here you see I this sling you don't want the you want to make sure that this is nowhere near the figure eight so if you have to shorten it like I did by putting a either a figure eight or I did a half hitch on a bite um, then you must do that and if you find that this is too much friction you can take one wrap out and just have you know two wraps around so I think that would be sufficient um, as long as it's not you're not using it for life support all right what's next okay What's up next? Here we have the Gree Gree by Petzl. Now, this device is not very popular in a boar culture, or in tree climbing rather, but it is extraordinarily popular in the rock climbing world. And in the arbor, or Arborist Realm, we have something similar, another offering by Petzl, called the Rig, and then there's also the ID, which um, has some type of special aspect of its cam for rescue. Um, now, the Rig and the ID, um, but I'm going to focus mostly on the Rig, because it's, you know, it's not necessarily for rescue, it's more for 
uh, just climbing and rope access and tree work and whatever else you can think of that's occupational um, versus, you know, a rescue. And the rig looks, it works exactly the same as this device here, uh, the Grigri, but the Grigri is different just in the sense that it's made to be much smaller and more compact and lighter than the rig. And it also, it's capacity, it's rope capacity only goes up to 11 millimeters versus the rig, which I believe goes anywhere between up to 13 or 14 millimeter climb lines. Um, so I use this all the time. Uh, I honestly wish it worked with my bigger ropes, uh, but I'm not about to spend money for the rig. So um, it works great. Um, even with the biggest lines and all you have to do is it's got this cam here the rope feeds in and Then it goes around um, I'll show you in a second around a cam and then It gets locked off. You have to be very careful with these devices to make sure that you install the rope into the proper orientation um, because they're is a chance that even if you're climbing with it incorrectly, um, it might feel good at first until it's not. <laughs> um, and the way this works is you feed in the rope and when you're ready to release tension, it's got this handle on the back and you just pull that up. So this is just, you know, it's, it's got a good amount of range here before it actually releases the rope, which is good because this could get caught on something potentially and it's designed to make that not an issue. So you really have to get it out there in order for it to get released. And then, so you just pull that and you see, the rope just comes right out. Um, and let me show you, if I can do this with one hand, um, how this is, how, what this looks like inside. <clears throat> Oop. Hold on. All right. So let's take a look at this thing. You have it installed, and then you open this swing plate, and you can see how the rope is in there. Inside the cam, it goes around. Like that so and then when you pull up this device it moves the cam and just releases it so very simple device and if you use ropes mostly in the um, see what is it uh, 8.9 to 11 millimeter range then definitely get one of these um, you can also use this as part of a rad system so anyway uh, next item Okay, next up we have the Rope Runner Pro, which is the new and improved version of the original Rope Runner. This device is absolutely fantastic for effectively anything um, that it can be used for. Uh, it excels at whatever you can use it for. Um, and there are a lot of uses for it. So, as you can see here, it is holding the rope. Again, it's a lot like a rope wrench in the sense that up here, there are bollards which allow, well, it puts a bend in the rope, you can see there. And then it goes through this bent portion here, which applies additional forces and then here we just have the pulley which doesn't really it does give some force um, but it's mostly for slack tending and it also makes it easy to you know pull and tighten anything you're looking to tighten um, 
It's quick, easy to stall, um, midline attachable, and it can also be used for climbing. You know, I use it all the time to climb SRS or SRT, whatever you want to call it. And you can even be used for MRS, but I haven't really done much of that. Um, it's just great. I love it. And then, so once you're ready to release it, you just depress this portion here, which is called the bird. Interesting, I know. And um, so you pull it down, and then it just releases. You have a lot of control with this device. Um, now, with both this this device, uh, well, with all of them, really, um, except except the figure eight on its own, um, not the one with the hitch, but just on its own, um, that those require, you need to put, you know, something like a alpine butterfly or an overhand on a bite just below the device to ensure that it won't prematurely release the load or release the tension when you don't want it to. Um, that way it'll only fall as far as the distance between, you know, wherever it begins and takes in the rope and the stopper knot. So, okay, I think we have one more option left. Let's get to it. Okay, so here is the next offering. This is called the Muncher Mule Overhand. It is a compound knot which incorporates first a Munter hitch, then a mule, which is a type of slip knot, and then an overhand on a bite. Now, what's great about this knot is, first I'll explain, I've taken this strand that thus far all the devices have, you know, used the strand itself, but because the Munster Mule overhand requires a rope or a piece of cord that is not just strong, but also flexible, um, this is a really new rope, and so it's not uh, very worn in. And so a knot like a Munster hitch wouldn't run properly. Um, plus it takes up a lot more space and it's a lot bulkier. So I took this cordelette, which is actually a length of hitch cord that I use as a cordelette because it's, you know, not a, people, not a lot of people have a um, cordelette that's actually made out of aramid fibers. Um, so anyway, I've connected, well first I've tied a alpine butterfly. There are other knots you can use, of course, but this is my choice, because it, you know, is just easy to tie, easy to undo after loading. And so, then I have this um, screw gate carabiner, locking beaner, and I've fastened the end of this with a clove hitch and given it some, just some tail, and put a figure eight stopper knot there, just as a backup. And then, originally, this length was longer. Um, and I had to, you know, pull in all the slack. And the way you do that is, after tying the Munter hitch, you are able to, you get, you know, it's not a lot of mechanical advantage, but it's better than pulling directly. And you can, you know, take in all that slack pretty easily. And once you've done that, you tie the mule, which again is a easy slip knot, and that secures it. And it leaves you with a bite. And you can easily extend the length of that bite, and then the bite goes around and you finish the knot or the compound knot off with a overhand on a bite. And the beauty of this is when I'm ready to untie it, I just undo this and then 
This is gonna be hard to do with one hand, but you'll get the gist. You very slowly pull this out. And when it gets to around this point here, you want to be very mindful because as soon as you pull this bite through, as soon as the slip knot comes undone, you're going to be holding a lot of the tension or weight, um, whichever is applicable, and you're going to be holding all that and you need to hold on to this brake strand here, otherwise it's going to come undone. So what this allows you to do is you pull it through and you, you pop it, and now you can see I'm holding um, the munter and when I let go it releases um, with you know more force on it it would have moved a lot more smoothly but you can you know holding on to this strand you can lower whatever you're working with uh, so it's great for hauling um, great not to know for hauling. It's also very useful um, for a lot of alpine rescue techniques. Um, so there's that. That's the Muncher Mule Overhand, aka the MMO. You'll hear, it a lot, you'll hear a lot of people calling it that. So this is a great not to know. And another thing that you can do is you can take this strand here and you can put it through the other carabiner like that. Pull it up through here, sorry about the camera. So once you've done that, you just, you've got basically a very raw three to one, I think, or maybe even a four to one. And you can use that mechanical advantage to really pull it in tightly. And once you've done that, you just tie the muncher mule overhand over all of these strands. So there's that. Thanks for watching this. If you watched all this until now, you're probably, you probably have the gear bug and you love equipment and you love learning new techniques and strategies for, you know, rope access and tree climbing and whatever you're into. So, Good for you. Happy that someone stayed for the journey. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button. Please leave comments below if you have any. Uh, check out my channel if you haven't already for more short form and long form videos. I have a huge library of over 200 videos about you know climbing techniques, knot tying, and hitches. All kinds of hitches. Um, probably a bunch that you've never even heard of. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. So wait. the prusik manually and hopefully it'll lock in sooner let's see yeah that's a pretty good pretty good progress capture there and then move this up move this tight okay oh yeah that's tight well, I was afraid that piece of gear is going to fly off and hit me in the face. What is slipping? I'm 
Yeah. Sounds like something is slipping. But it might just be the rope straining through the pulleys because I don't see anything. Oh, I know what it was now. This, this prusik is sliding because it was originally up here. Ah, uh, that's not good. I've never had this happen before. They always hold. Weird. Let's just keep trying for a hell of it. Ah, damn. Keep sliding. Ah, well, real life problems. Oh well, it happens. I'll have to figure out a workaround. Maybe a bigger prusik loop with way more wraps. I think that's what we need.